At Carpy.net, we use a lot of Raspberry Pis, and mostly we use them in the headless configuration. This just means there's no keyboard or monitor hooked up. In order to get to the Pi, we need to access them through the network. In order to find them on the network, they need to have a known address. This video will show you how to set a fixed IP for your Raspberry Pi on your network. The first thing we need to do is get the Raspbian image for our Pi. We will be using the Raspbian Lite image because we're running our Pi headless. We don't need any of the graphical stuff. So let's start the download. And that will take some time depending on your internet connection speed. Now I'm doing this on Linux, but if you're using some other operating system, check out the installation guide on the raspberrypi.org website. They have instructions for writing SD card images for a variety of operating systems. The Raspbian image is zipped up. I'm going to unzip it and that will create a file that ends in .img. That is the image file that contains the Raspbian OS that we're going to write to the SD card. So I'm going to go ahead and put my SD card in. We can see where the SD card is mounted by running dmessage. On my system, it mounted under as MMC BLK0. Um, also, I had a partition on this SD card, so it auto-mounted. So I want to make sure that that's unmounted before I move on. Okay. Now I'm going to write the image file straight to the SD card. It's very important that you find which device is your SD card because using the DD command you could wipe out your hard drive. We don't want to do that. So the IF parameter is the input file. We're going to use jessielite.img. The yeah, OF parameter is our SD card. And I'm just going to specify a large block size to try to speed things along. Now this will take some time. Once the file is written, you can eject your SD card. And we'll put this in the Pi and boot it up. Now that we have our SD card created, we need to do some initial configuration of the Pi. Now I know we, I said we were going to run this headless. Um, but for the initial configuration phase, we are going to hook up a monitor and a keyboard so we can see what we're doing. Once those are hooked up, we're just going to boot the Pi. Once the Pi is booted, we need to do some initial setup. So we're going to log in with the default username and password, Pi and Raspberry. Then we'll run the Raspberry Pi configuration. We'll just go through the list here. The expand file system was already done for us automatically in this version. If it wasn't for you, then you can do that. Um, we do want to change the user password because we're going to run this headless and it's going to be sitting on our network and everybody knows the uh, default password. So we're gonna make sure we change that. Now I'm gonna change the internationalization options because I'm not in the UK. If you're in the UK, you can leave these alone. I'm gonna change these for the US.
Okay, the final thing that I'm going to change here is I'm going to turn SSH on because we want to be able to access this over the network. When we select finish, the Pi will reboot. Once the reboot is finished, we'll log in. Now we're ready to set up the network for our static IP. To do this, all we have to do is edit a few config files in the Etsy directory. I'm a VI guy, so I'm going to use VI. If you need something a little easier to use, Nano is available on the Pi. Before we do that though, let's look and see what network interfaces we have. ifconfig-a. You can see this is a Pi 3, so I have ETH 0, that's the wired interface. And I have WLAN 0, that's the wireless interface. We'll go ahead and set up both to use the same IP. First file we want to edit is Etsy dhcpcd.com. There's some stuff in there already. We're just going to go to the bottom and we're going to add two sections, one for ETH0 and one for WLAN0. We'll start with ETH0. So we're going to say our static IP address is 192.168.0.5. I made this up. And the net mask is 24, which means 255.255.255. Now these could be different for your network. The router I'm using uses 192.168.0 for its LAN side. Yours may be different. If you think yours is different, you can log into the web administration interface of your router and see what your LAN address is. So we're going to set routers. This is the gateway for the network to get out. Uh, usually it's pointed to the IP address of your router. 192.168.0.1 is my router. Let's set the domain name servers. Again, your router will usually provide this service for you. I'm just going to duplicate this block for the WLAN 0 interface. Okay, I'm going to save the file and exit. That's enough for the wired interface, ETH0. There's one more step for wireless. We're going to edit the WPA supplicant file. And we're going to add parameters for our network. Set your SSID. This is typically your wireless network's name. PSK is your password to get onto your wireless. And that's it. At this point, I'm going to connect the network cable. And then I will reboot the Pi. Once the Pi reboots, we'll log in again. We'll check our network config. You can see ETH0 has our static IP, 192.168.0.5. Let's check connectivity by pinging our router. You can see we received two replies, that's good. Let's check DNS by seeing if we can ping somewhere on the web. And that looks good as well. At this point we can remove the keyboard and the monitor and truly be headless. Now let's check our remote connectivity using SSH. And we're in. We can now access our Pi through the network. We don't need keyboard, we don't need a monitor. The Pi can live anywhere we have a network connection. And we can access it at will through SSH. I have one bonus tip for you. When you load a new Raspberry Pi image like we did for this video, 
a lot of times the files will already be out of date you want to make sure especially if you have a network accessible device that you update all your software so you get all the latest security fixes so let's do that sudo app get update will go get the list of all the latest available packages for Raspbian sudo app get dist upgrade will upgrade your Pi to the latest packages we now have a headless, fully updated Raspberry Pi at a fixed address on our network. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.